G'day, fellas, and welcome to a casted game. We have got an incredibly exciting game for you today. You want to know why? Because we're playing on Boulder Bay, and there is no Rus in sight. Oh, doesn't it feel amazing? I don't know about you guys, but I have grown incredibly tired with Rus on Boulder Bay. So I've just said, you know what? If there's a game with double, like a Rus mirror on Boulder Bay, I'm not even going to cast it. I can't be bothered, man. I, I can't do another Rus Boulder Bay mirror. So, who do we have spawning in towards the north? Drongo. Uh, well, 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 Drongo. Uh, <laughs> we've got Casper who is spawning in. Going to be playing the Abbasid Dynasty. Towards the south, we've got Iagos, who is going to be playing the Holy Roman Empire. These guys are playing right now in the, uh, the quarterfinals of the N4C qualifiers. The winner of this series uh, will go through to the semifinals. And uh, and then eventually, potentially, eventually, potentially, that's pretty good. Eventually, potentially, uh, to the finals for a ticket to Berlin. Um, and uh, I tell you what, that excites me greatly because uh, I'm going to be going to Berlin. I'm going to be seeing potentially one of these two guys here. Uh, so if you did miss the first game, then, uh, you know, checking up the scoreboard in the top right-hand corner, it already spoils it for you. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, and just give you the, the spoiler alert. Um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Iago's won. Uh, so we are now heading into the second game. This is match point um, because it is a best of three. Casper, if he does, if he's not careful, uh, we'll uh, we'll lose this. Or if if Casper's not careful and and, uh, and loses this game, he's going to be knocked out of the tournament. Uh, but uh, already we see some smart moves here. But uh, you know they're smart, but they're not so smart. You know when I see Casper hiding tree or sheep behind the tree, I think of like all those memes. It's like when I tell my children to play hide and seek, and it's like they they're hiding behind a fucking pot and it's like this fat little kid. It's like, ah, uh, you, you, you silly sheep. First sheep going to be going down. Second one attempting to go down. But uh, yeah, you can see a whole bunch of those fat little sheep. Like, <laughs> what are you doing there? You little dickheads. But uh, now down down to the south, we'll take a look at how Iagos is doing. Um, but he has got plenty of villagers on wood, as you would expect. He's going for the standard Holy Roman Empire boat boom. Has got the prelate out, got out the single scout at this stage, and up towards the north, it looks like we've got the same thing happening. Casper going to be playing as the Abbasid and looking to get those cheaper docks up already on the single dock. I don't suspect we'll see a double dock today, uh, but he is adding more villagers over to wood, so there is the potential for us to see that. Now, keep in mind, when it comes to the water balance here, uh, which is something that we can actually talk about, because I tell you what, I actually enjoy water games, as long as they're just not fucking boring. And, you know, Rus mirrors on Boulder Bay, they're boring. Uh, th there's no two ways about it. It just bores me. Like, you know, like, it's kind of like French spin to win because they've, they've only got one unit. So it's like, it, there's no real composition to it. You know, like, at, at least if you have, like, a mirror on land, then it's like, okay, well, like, there's a mix and there's micro involved. But then, I mean, there's micro involved on, on the water, but it's, it's just so one-dimensional. So it sort of makes you hate it. But I guess the reason why I'm excited to see this game is because I suspect it's probably going to be, get this, get this, in a strategy game, strategy involved. And why do I say that? I say that because uh, typically we have, you know, if if we do, if I do a quick history of the water meta for you guys, uh, we, we can enjoy this uh, this scout, you know, scouting while I, exp while, while I give my lecture. Uh, so back in the good old days, we used to think everything was fair. And then it turned out, oh, wait a minute, French get the Hulk. And uh, and then the French just started, oh my lord. Oh my lord, we've got we've got early spears. I didn't even spot this. We've got a forward barracks coming out. Never mind, my lecture going to get cancelled. Uh, because Casper has indeed invested a lot of villagers onto wood. And we're not seeing double dock, we're seeing dock plus barracks. Uh, so Iagos needs to get up to the, for, uh, to the second age before uh, his enemy kills his dock. And then subsequently makes a... Uh, a, uh, a galley from this, but this is a smart move coming out right now. Already we see villagers being pulled uh, and looking to fight this. We also see a prelate coming out. We've got some next level meta gaming coming out, and I think what he's looking to do is just try and delay his enemy from taking down this dock. We will get into this to the history of uh, of uh, of water balance. I promise you that. But we're gonna we'll put it over on. I'm gonna put it over on the other side of my screen just to make sure I don't forget. Uh, I would type it out, but uh, one villager already going down. You can see he's delaying it. Needs to get this gold in now. It's finally come in. I see suspect is just going to be dropping down a, a whole bunch of villagers onto that landmark. Uh, he needs to make sure. So what is he doing? He needs to delay that dock dying until he gets up to the next age so that he can get a galley out and so that he can actually defend this because he can't defend it until then. He doesn't have the numbers.
numbers. That's just a simple fact. And he's going to continue losing villagers if he's not careful. So what I would probably expect he does is brings out another five villagers and looks to drop down an outpost. The idea, though, is never to get that outpost up. He wants to just draw away the spears from his opponent. But it doesn't look like he's going to be doing that. And you can see he's rushing up the Arkham Chapel here. Uh, so already going to be in a difficult spot. So let's talk a little bit about sort of the history of the matter. So in the, in the beginning, uh, I'm, I'm talking like at the Big Bang sort of level, everyone thought that water balance was even. Then the French got really, really strong. And they stayed strong forever. Um, but uh, it, 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 oh, gosh. it did eventually get worked out that the Mongols on water can be very, very potent as well. Doc going to be going down here, so no surprises there. A bit of a mistake coming out from Iago's not to drop in those, uh, those extra fishies uh, before uh, the Doc goes down. Um, but, um, so, and, and then so French got nerfed, and then we sort of fell into this whole little rock, paper, scissors thing that I love to talk about. The French lose to the Rus because the Rus have got so much mobility. The Rus lose to the Holy Roman Empire because their boats are a lot stronger uh, than other civilizations, but still have that bit of mobility. And then the Holy Roman Empire lose to the French because their boats, while being mobile, aren't necessarily mobile enough to take uh, the game or take control of the game Um Sorry, I, I, I've, I've lost my train of thought. Es essentially, <laughs> the Holy Roman Empire boats, they're, they're mobile um, and still quite strong. And so as a result, uh, they're able to counter the, uh, the, the Rus. Uh, and then we've sort of fallen into this sort of trap now. Well, not necessarily a trap, but this sort of stage where we don't really know what the water balance is just because people don't play water anymore. Uh, it seemed to be that way on, on this map in particular, which has been the only map throughout this tournament that's got water on it. Uh, it seems to be Rus mirrors. Other than that, this is the very first game I'm seeing where we don't have a Rus mirror uh, so I'm obviously very excited for it but that's that's your little uh that's your little interesting tidbit and I, I will just start by saying that I am very impressed already uh with the strategic mastermind and coming out from Casper you can see how long it's going to take for him to age up here obviously only has access to spears in the first age but he's gone and he's used that and he has subsequently turned it into a very nice early game victory now, uh, when I say victory, obviously that doesn't necessarily mean he means he, he's won the game. It's just, you know, it's one of those small little victories that makes up uh, towards potentially winning the war. But uh, we'll take a look at how Iagos is doing as he does look to put down a dock in the exact same place that he had before. Uh, obviously, he's got archers out now, so going to be able to defend it a little bit easier. We'll be able to get back out onto the open ocean. You can see all of his fish sitting, or all of his uh, fishing boats sitting up here ready to go. But I, I got to say, I like this opening from Casper. Makes a lot of sense. Now, behind this, Casper actually looking uh, to go fast castle, I would assume. Uh, with, with six villagers on gold, uh, playing the Abbasid dynasty, my friend. That, my friend, is, is a, uh, that's a that's a fast castle if I've ever seen one. But speaking of fast, looks like the spearman going to be going down pretty quickly. Unfortunately, losing its life, but... Uh, Take a look at my girlfriend. Here she comes out of the woods. And uh, my girlfriend's actually six spearmen. Surprise. And uh, yeah, you shouldn't have looked at my girlfriend, should you? Uh, but <laughs> Yago's now going to be falling back here. These spears, obviously, you want to avoid getting into melee combat with them. Even if you are an archer, archers obviously do very effectively. Again, some nice little bit of micro right there coming in from Yago's. Moving the front ones back at the same time, keeping the, uh, the back line firing. He manages to build up the mass. And uh, what he's doing here, you might not think much of it, but it's actually a pretty smart move. He's falling forcing his enemy to make more more archers. Um, but at the same time behind this, he's going to castle. So you guys are, would be very familiar with that sort of Mongol fast castle build order that we often see. I suspect it's the same sort of mindset there that you want to keep your enemy stuck in the second age, stuck fighting against uh, you, your units at the same time you're attacking. Uh, but now it looks like the galley going to be coming out on the open ocean. Going to be looking to secure up a little bit of a foothold out here. And uh, no dock really actually has scattered out this dock. We did see it earlier in the day. Uh, but doesn't look like any dows are out just yet. Just the 10 fishing boats. He does have a dow now coming out because obviously he knows his enemy has gone up. And we're going to see this galley look to try and cause some havoc. At the same time, Casper actually not even going for a fast castle unless he's already clicked up. No, just going to be going for fresh foodstuffs into a dow. Into a double dow, it looks like. Into a triple. Oh, baby, a triple? We've got ourselves a triple dow coming out now so Kasva realizing well hold on a minute I might not actually be able to go up to castle this quickly my enemy has managed to get back out onto water uh, but uh, yeah Kasva going to be having the uh, the Dow advantage at least at this stage he's going to be feeling pretty good about it but uh, yeah now Kasva going to be looking to push his advantage got the nice speed here a little bit of a pull trick coming in there from uh, from Iagos not something we see a lot there so for anybody wondering what the pull trick is uh, so your units actually get a little bit of a movement speed when they are coming back into formation so as you can see, you know, all units have got a sort of formation that they abide by. Uh, fishing boat's probably one of the exceptions. Villagers, uh, actually villagers do have formations as well. Um, 
but essentially what happens is they will speed up. They get a nice little movement speed up uh, to to move that. But now a transport ship going to be coming out here, uh, looking to get these uh, these archers uh, across to the other side of the map. Pretty smart move, actually. Transport ships are pretty cheap. 100 wood for those bad boys. Also really good at tanking. Uh, so this isn't something that I realized. I think Mr. Merlin may have told me that. Maybe it was Kanoki. I'm not sure. Someone mentioned to me that transport ships are actually busted when it comes to tanking uh, fire. So what you would do is like you would make a whole bunch of galleys and then you would get transport ships in there as well. So if we take a look at the transport ship, yeah, you can see it's got 600 health. So it's like it's pretty good at tanking up stuff considering like uh, the galley has got 550 and it costs like uh, this, this is costing 360. That's only costing 100. So you are getting a great return on investment there. But speaking of in return on investment, looks like Iago's going to be potentially getting uh, or potentially losing his entire fishing economy. At the same time, Archer sitting, sitting idly by, not having a lot of luck back there. Dow's going to be trying to get through without taking too much damage. Manages to get back, it looks like, four of those uh, fishing boats back into the docks. A third dock going to be coming up from Iago's as well. And now the Dow's going to be just racing away. And this is part of the reason why uh, we sort of have this, uh, this unknown factor when it comes to water strength, water superiority. Priority. Villagers got to be careful here. It looks like they are going to get two shot by the archers that have made their way into the wood line. It looks like one, two, three archers so far. Or rather, villagers, four villagers now going to be going down. He evacuates this entire side. Probably going to need to be expanding out towards this position, but does have 600 gold already stacked up. So he's going to be able to get up to the next age. And when he does get up to the next age, probably going to be looking to get teak masks. Um, that's always a great option. Uh, but another option is uh, is going to be to go for those uh, explosive dows. Uh, these guys are going to be extra strong with those teak masks, uh, providing in that extra health. So we'll have to see how he plays it. Could also be looking at potentially going into uh, backlers. I'm a big fan of the backler. I know that people often call them the worst ship in the game, but I think that there's a caveat to that, and that is that uh, pound for pound, look, they're not very good. They are for population, but they don't cost a lot. And they're quite, they're very quick, uh, very good for kiting. You're never going to be losing, um, you're, you're never going to be losing your backlers to uh, demo ships at all. They're just way too effective at kiting uh, because they also have this uh, ballista upgrade. I think there's a ballista upgrade in here somewhere. Uh, I don't know where it is. I do not know where the ballista upgrade is. Maybe, maybe it just comes as standard now. I, I remember back in the day it used to have, or maybe it's only the deli that got the ballista upgrade. But now looks like he's going to be doing a bit of, uh, you know, well, you can come to my base and kill my fishing ships. That's fine. I'm just going to go to your base and kill your fishing ships. But I guess the main thing that's concerning me, I'm sure you can see what I'm pointing to on the map, is that we have invested a lot of resources into the ocean or into the water to deny water. But now, at the same time, we've got a bit of a forward base that's coming up. And, you know, it's, it's all about opportunity cost, isn't it? When you think about this game, you know, you can have 50 villagers and your enemy can have 50 villagers as well. But if your enemy is making land units and you're making water units, sure, you're going to win the water. But guess what, mate? Your landmarks, they're not on the water. They're, they're on the land. That's why they're called landmarks. They don't call them watermarks. They call them landmarks. And if they called them watermarks, I'd be talking to an IP lawyer about it. Oh, that, that was pretty good. Uh, I'm not talking about the joke, but just the fact that, like, watermarks is an actual thing. Uh, and, and landmarks being on land. I'm, I'm impressed, Strongo. Did you research that? Nope. That wasn't even a joke. Nope. I, I'm just... I'll take it. I'll take it. But the forward base coming out for Casper. Obviously, uh... Casper clicked up, right? Hold on. Casper's in age two. Where did all of his resources go? Casper was sitting on... Casper was sitting on 1,200... Oh, no, he was sitting on 600 gold, wasn't he? I, I, I thought Casper was going up to the third age, but it looks like Casper is, uh, is actually sort of changing up the plan. You can see he's got a villager out here. Villager, got to be careful here. Does have the uh, textiles upgrade, so it's got that plenty of extra health, but yeah, I'm just sort of scratching my head. Oh, he's obviously thrown down a lot of horsemen, it seems. Uh, and, and keep in mind, this is this is his wall on the front here, but uh, yeah, back towards the base of Casper. No military production, so everything that you see back here has been made on the front line. And now Casper actually looking to continue this approach and my main concern as i said before i thought casper was actually up on the way uh to the third age but it looks like that was a bit of a uh, a misread by me he's instead gone for some sort of feudal age play um and going to be trying to look to punish his opponent but you, you, you can see right here yaku was just making the um the the I, I suspect it. I can, he can only be the wrong call. He's not focusing on the resources that he should be right now as uh, Casper going to continue pushing in underneath, underneath the tower. A lot of horsemen coming out for him. Yeah, actually, all of the gold mines are on the opposite side 
for for uh, Iagos. He is in a bit of a tough spot. He's got the 8K here. He's got the 4K down here, and he just obviously can't get to this one. So now he's only really got the choice between wood and food. Uh, but, uh, you know, with all the wood that he's got in the bank, I would expect a lot more buildings, a lot more production coming out from him. And we just don't see that. Uh, but now it looks like Casper coming into the wood line. Going to be looking for some villager picks up, pickups. Uh, doesn't spot it. A little bit of a sheep back there as well. Sitting there with no allegiance just yet. And uh, Casper capturing a, a sheep as well. Looks like it belongs to Iago's. But uh, he manages to win water. So he, he lost water. And then he won it back. Um, but the question really just comes down to, was it worth it? You know, was it really worth investing all your resources into these galleys because this is a lot of resources like if we just do some quick math here we're talking about 360 resources a pop so if you've got four here five six you've got six times what was it six times 360 so you're looking at 2160 resources that's more than 2000 resources that he's put in just on those galleys and at the same time obviously Casper did look to get Dow's out as well in response so you can duck you can deduct those off but Casper making smart moves down here investing a lot of his resources into the land in fact just going all in at this point uh, on the land it seems uh, towards the uh, opposite side of the map or opposite side of the base now we've got Casper coming around looking to try and find some more villagers the unit's going to be going down he manages to get in underneath this uh, Arkham Chapel he's going to be trying to take out the, uh, the the archers you can see them teeing off towards that position as well and uh, just a huge amount of, uh, of horsemen in here it's not looking particularly good right now uh, for uh, for um, uh, Yagos but Casper uh, now going to be finally clicking up to that next stage I was wondering where it was, but it looks like it's finally coming through now. Um, but uh, he manages to pull out. And at the same time, uh, he's sort of keeping his opponent in the second age. So it's important to remember behind this, like, Yagos is just sitting here in age two. Lost this gold mine as well. This gold mine definitely getting shut down. He is getting zoned out very, very quickly. Uh, and he'll be able to move up to this hunt if he wants again and, you know, try and take some food here. You can see he's struggling with it. Uh, but the real issue that he's going to have is that his enemy is heading up to the third age. And it's going to mean that you know, it's only a matter of time until uh, you, you've got armored units marching in. Now, obviously, you're going to be able to make your own. You could potentially look at going into early men at arms. You're playing the Holy Roman Empire. Once again, you got no gold. You got absolutely no gold. Uh, and that's where it becomes very, very difficult for him. But uh, now we'll take a look over towards the base. Once again, Viago is where all the action is happening. Uh, on Casper's side of the map, not a lot happening. Just losing a dock slowly. The galley just doing its work. But uh, you can see that uh, a huge amount of resources continues to sit idle up towards that uh, central location for Iagos. And he's definitely probably a bit upset that he has uh, spent all those resources. But uh, now it looks like that... Uh, why is there so much line of sight? Oh, you know why there's so much, so much line of sight? Because I've, uh, I've got line of sight turned off. Now we can see exactly what Iagos sees. Looks like he's trying to get a mining camp up here. We can see him putting it down. Uh, there's actually a bit of distance between these two. You can see how badly he needs gold. So, look, I'm not, I'm not going to say that he got stuffed over by his map because by the same token, I think that if he was on the opposite side, very easily you could have this gold isolated as well. Very easily have this gold isolated. Uh, so I don't necessarily think it's a it's a map screw. But uh, now Casper going to be reaching that next stage. We'll check in with his production. We'll see exactly what he's got coming out. Looks like he's going for some lancers. No real surprises there. Uh, triple lancer queued up at the moment. Nothing in the barracks, nothing in the archery range. But I wouldn't be surprised to see him adding even more production very shortly as we see three villagers coming up to the front line and uh, and probably veteran archer also coming through. Looks like he's going to be adding in a couple more lancers. Um, but uh, yeah, very difficult spot right now for Iagos uh, with his opponent up in the third age. We'll tune in with him and we'll see how he's doing. He's up to 124 population um, and uh, 70 of that is villagers. So not a bad economy. But speaking of bad economies... That does not feel good, horsemen in the economy. But keep in mind, a lot of these villagers, they're going to be alive because it's only horsemen that are killing you. You really don't need to be worried. Like, the enemy's going to lose more horsemen than you will lose villagers. You still do lose villagers. I mean, there's a prelate dead up there, a single villager dead that's here. Uh, do we have... Yeah, we've got uh, textiles coming through for Iagos as well. So both players making the right decision. And it looks like a tap out has just occurred. Uh, Iagos just taps out completely. He says, you know what? I'm not going to even bother. You're way too far ahead. I will let you have this one. So, fellas, I'm going to leave links in the description to both of these guys on Twitch. You can catch them there. This has been part of N4C. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Make sure you tune in for the deciding match.